They may wear costumes, but it isn't Halloween. They're real life superheroes. It's anti-comic book. I mean, you know, it's it's about just normal kids dressing up in wetsuits and going out and fighting crime. I mean, it's incredibly accessible. You could see, you know, tomorrow on the BBC or like CNN, just seeing someone, you seeing, you know, a, a whole group of superheroes walking on the streets. We're basically saying to the audience, hey, we know you know these kinds of movies. We know you know the rules. Mm. So let's have some fun breaking them. I'm gonna make Kickass pay for what he did to my dad. Yo, Kickass! I'm building an evil army. Who is this guy? He's claiming to be the world's first real supervillain. There's a lot of violent movies out there, but Kick-Ass kind of seems to get it sort of, you know, in the teeth. Why do you think that is? And it's odd, too, because we actually deal with the consequences of violence. There's so many movies out there where you have these guys with endless magazines and their assault rifle and they're shooting people and no one's bleeding or dying and, and we show that you know yes violence can be intense and gratuitous and over the top but guess what there's always consequences um i think kick-ass gets a lot of attention for that because it's unique in that way and, and we're sort of kind of pointing out the hypocrisy uh the, in other films you've never kissed a boy have you oh my god that is so adorable maybe she's a dyke maybe i'll jam my foot up your snatch Oh, she's super bitchy, I like. So what's the big deal anyway? What could be so great about gagging on some douchebag's tongue? It's pretty fucking great. You know how you feel when you watch that video by Union J? Holy shit, you don't know. This will change your life. Don't ever say you're lonely, just lay your problems on me and I'll be waiting there for you. You guys love this shit more than fanboys love Stan Lee, don't you? Who's Stan Lee? She's kind of having an awakening. Mm -hmm. You know, she's she's trying to figure out who she is personally, but then, you know, when she realizes that she likes guys a bit more than, than just brother or sister, she kind of throws her off and puts her off because she's, you know, she's grown up by just herself. She didn't have an older sister. She didn't have an older brother. She, she didn't understand really what it meant to, to actually be attracted to a guy. So it kind of pushes her off, you know? What the fuck was that? I know, right? I'm soaked. That? That is who you are, Mindy. You may not dress like us or talk like us, but when it comes to boys, we're all the same. Twilight, Channing Tatum, Union J, it's biology, bitch. Is there sort of a parallel between you and the character in the sense that you've also grown up in quite an adult arena? Yeah, in a way. I mean, yeah. I mean, I think both of us are kind of put off by the idea of like high school and and kind of confused around a uh, tons of teenagers and stuff because we have grown up in very adult lifestyles, yeah. Hey, man. Hey, Marcus, what's up? I see you answered your phone. That means you're not in school. I was, but I wasn't feeling so good. And, and so the nurse decided to send me home. Poor thing. Well, I'm almost home. I'll make you some soup and we can watch Jeopardy. All right, I'll see you soon, okay? All right. Is it nice not to have so much attention on the kind of the foul mouth and all, all the rest of it? Yeah, it's nice. It's nice to have less of the the controversy aspect and more of actually being able to do the character. Uh -huh. You know, it makes it a bit more interesting for me because it's less people asking me everything about controversy and asking me more about who the character is. In the first one, Chloe was eleven, sure, and she she was saying the c word and murdering you know fifty guys in one scene. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's like a lot for people to handle, I think. Yeah, and I think this one. People finally get the hang of what like what kick ass is. Uh, I think the only media attention was Jim Carrey. There were more and more people joining us every night. Colonel Stars and Stripes supporting for duty. And try to have fun. Otherwise, what's the point? Jim Carrey obviously, um, you know, tweeted saying that he wasn't going to support the movie. Yeah. Um, because Did of he? The, yeah, I think so. Yeah, well, he said he wasn't, he wasn't going to appear to support yeah. it, I think, yeah. because uh, of, the, of the violence and, and I guess that his, his stance on gun violence in the mm -hmm. wake of sort of Sandy Hook. Was that a, a little bit of a... How did that feel to you? Well, he, I think we love Jim Carrey and his movies because you never know what he's going to do or say. And in real life, I'm telling you, you never know what he's going to do or say. Sure. So we were all surprised by his tweets, but at the same time, he's entitled to his point of view. I think he's fantastic in the movie. Sure. Ultimately, I hope everyone sees the movie and judges for themselves. Yeah, he got the heat, and I didn't have to answer all the controversial questions. <laughs> sure, right. Makes it easier for me, right? 
When you go back to your hometown, you feel alienated. I suggest you get on your way. Most of the parts that I play are just things that I got. It's that thing when you're... There's a more true version of yourself. You got a very attractive young lady over there staying with you. 